Thanks for tuning in today. Really appreciate that. My name is Scott. I'm your host. Welcome to Go Small, Live Large. Today, the video you're going to see is from a couple I met at a KOA campground in Kentucky. They have a 2006 Ford E350 van, which in of itself is pretty cool, but it's actually a Sportsmobile South build-out on the RV equipped with a Quigley 4x4 system. I think you're going to love Tim and Christy in particular. She is super sassy and brassy, and they've got a story they are dying to share with you. Uh, and stay tuned to the end because they're going to ask your help specifically. And let's give Tim and Christy a hand with their request. Did I mention this is their first RV? Let's get into it. So, <laughs> Tim. And Christy Clemmer. And Christy. So, these guys rolled in last night with this amazing vehicle, and I just couldn't let them get away without giving a little tour. And they've been gracious enough to do just that. You can see Lily's just right there. So let's uh, do interior first. Yeah. So uh, the boys and the girls and the audience are going to love this because this is a super decked out van. And then we'll do Tim with the, uh, with the exterior. Cool? That sounds yeah. good. All right. Let's give a tour. So what are we looking at here? This is our van. Um, this is just the outside of the sink cabinet. So down in here, I store our Crocs that we wear just around camp. We can fit two pairs in here, one for each of us. This ladder. I just made a couple modifications just this last week to the van where we added some uh, flooring and some like just compact contact paper to the outside of the cabinets and I do just some paint and some other things um but basically this is where when we're on the road tim or i will work typically we're both uh corporate america and type away on our desks and then when you come in right here we have like all of our toiletries and that sort of thing first aid kits medications um and then this is where i keep my hiking clothes typically and then tim keeps his hiking clothes we use the Marie Kondo folding style, which I find incredibly important when you're on the road. Yes. Keep your crap organized. And then down here, we have an emergency uh, PETT toilet, I believe it's called, with um, the spare waste bags that we use to go oh. anywhere toilet. So tell us a little bit about the toilet then. So it's a composting or is it a cassette yeah. or what is it? It's, it's actually neither. It's just um, an empty shell of a it's like a seat with three legs and you put this bag, you lift up the lid and then you put the bag down inside and then you do your business and then you um, put it actually in a bag that comes in the kit and then you can just throw it away. Ah, yeah, so, okay. so it's not composting, cool. but it's nice for when you're at a, I don't know, when you're camping somewhere that you don't have a lot of privacy and you need to do your business, it's yeah. kind of a nice way to do it. Yeah, so, I got yeah. it. That's cool. Yeah, and then this is just a little butane um, stove. Lots of times I bring my Camp Chef oven with me, uh -huh. but it fills this entire uh, mm. shelf, so it cabinet top. So it's a little larger than we really wanted to bring this trip. So we're just using a little butane uh, stove this trip. And then these all lock. And then, so, oh, go ahead. So Christy, clearly this is a pop top. So tell us yeah. just a little bit about what we're... Yeah, see, so the fact you can stand up in it is stand. pretty amazing, right? Yes, yeah. So that was very important for me. That was the number one thing I wanted was to be able to stand. Cause, yeah. I don't know. I kind of wanted to be able to stand in the kitchen, like stand here, make right. some food, pass it out to my husband to cook out there sort of yep. thing. We do most of our cooking outside. So that really made it convenient so we can move around um, and stand and not. So it probably adds, what do you think, three feet? Yeah, at least three feet, I'd say, because I yeah. think I'm like five nine, and I have tons. Yeah, of it's push -up space. really amazing. Yeah, it's really high. So um, down here we have a refrigerator. Uh, yep. Then I keep all of our silverware and utensils here, For and sure. all of these lock under the sink. We were able to keep like um, collapsible mixing bowls and that type of stuff. Yeah, those great. And then this is I great. I love this. Tim put Look this, at this in, and it comes all the way outside. So if you want to shower outside, yeah. You can. And a pretty big sink, right? It is a decent sized sink. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, I'm able to easily do dishes here. We brush our teeth here all the time. Yeah. It's really convenient. Yeah. So the bed is like a full. And then what we do is we actually, we don't sleep 
that way we sleep this way Long comfortably right. if we're down here sure and then i add a little cube here that we kind of throw a pillow on and it kind of extends it nicely i gotcha and then i have lights that can come on during the night but really and then oh, one more thing though all the food is in oh. here and i try to keep it organized in like clear containers so you can see what you're grabbing that's a good idea and um yeah i use a industrial strength velcro a lot right um i do a lot of the driving and uh if you don't don't you love velcro no it's... don't you love girls that drive oh i do love girls that drive <laughs> I know. i'm probably one of the very few i like, know totally thank you a lot of truck driver men are like hey let's kill <laughs> the stereotype man. let's kill the yeah, stereotype i do kill stereotypes <laughs> quite a bit here i have clothes hanging like i wear a lot of dresses comfortable yeah so yeah we do that um okay but the real cool thing about this yes, is please. the pop top right yeah so the really neat thing is this comes down oh in the front and the back oh. and it makes an additional bed so you can bring friends family yes if the spouse is hot and you don't want to deal with it you just go up there yeah. <laughs> if i run a little warm i sleep down here with the star cool <laughs> air conditioner on us and he sleeps out here so yeah yeah it's really nice and then it just pops right back up there wow that is so cool and then we have um blinds that come down all around yep uh and then lights most of these are led lights and these are all entirely remote control or just push led lights. yeah and it looks like a like a, almost a shower curtain in the back for privacy is that but it looks <laughs> well, light in. yeah so what i did is i just, which is pretty genius actually i i took a shower um a shower curtain hole and then i just put some curtains i picked up like at menards really cheap on top of them for now the curtains that were in there they had they had lived their best first and second life so it was time for another set of something <laughs> so we're going like this until we get to florida and our mom will make us uh custom <laughs> blinds we're hoping. that's cool and you yeah. guys have had this rig for how long we've had this rig for just over a month or two at your first that. rv it is so before this we you... were tent campers yeah and then we were pretty agile about it we woke up in the mud and the rain enough times we're like well we're not doing this anymore <laughs> and then we got a rooftop tent and i made my husband um basically build me one of those little uh pull out stoves and stuff on the back there's a youtuber and he has like this long pull out stove and it's an oven and he has a pull out refrigerator so i recreated that in the back of my lexus mom car and then um we sold that and now here we are in uh our sportsmobile which we haven't named yet we have to come up with a clever name. i need a trip. clever name right yeah and i understand that this was um really modern color scheme when you guys got it Yes. Oh, yes. I did a lot of um, female changing. I don't know quite what it looked like the before. The inside was so dark and dreary. I couldn't stand it. it dark everything and was dreary. Dark gray and black and dark brown. And I was like, okay, this will. I can. I can make the bones of this structure work. Yeah. For like a trip. But then I spent the last week, kind of renovating it, flipping it, redecorating. And, yeah, redecorating <laughs> until some things worked out. Including everybody for this. A candle. <laughs> oh, we got the candle. Wait, wait, wait for it. Look at that. She's got an herb garden in here. Nice herb job. Herb garden. And everything's velcroed down. Yeah, so totally. nothing goes flying I know. It is. You down got like, the road. You got like 20 bucks with a velcro on that thing. It's, I know. It ain't moving, <laughs> I probably man. do. I don't care. It's I went in my herb garden, man. <laughs> getting so, it. That is so great. So, yeah. Usually, though, I'm up there driving in the driver's seat. And, um... One of my favorite things about this rig yeah. for other women who drive yes. is this is a true 4x4. Four four. Uh, so it's awesome if I'm driving down the street, we hit a gravel travel or a dirt road, I put it in park, I have Tim jump out, my husband, he locks in the four-wheel drive for me, and then I rip it up. Well, well thank you so much for, yeah. the, uh, for the tour. It's so awesome, right? Uh, yeah. And the cab seat spin around. Uh, just the one seat spin. Just the, the one other seat. other one doesn't. All right, that's fair. Wow. I'll take it, though. It's just yeah. so cool, right? Yeah. All right, let's go uh, on the outside and talk to Tim. Sounds good. Thanks. Yeah. All right, so a tough act to follow. <laughs> but, uh, Tim, so what is part of your manly duties here? All right, so she has a special technique for doing the dishes. Uh, when we're RVing, the, the technique is give them to me. I do the dishes, and this is how we uh, dry the dishes. That's how dishes are done. It works. So, well, I suggest this to other women. <laughs> special technology going on right there. So this is a 4x4. So what, what kind of rig is it? It's a Ford van, right? Yeah. So give us a little one-on-one -on, -one on what the rig is, year, um, and definitely the 4x4. All right. So this is, uh, at its heart, a uh, 2006 
uh, Ford E350 van with a six liter turbo diesel. Uh, it was converted by Sportsmobile South uh, and so we refer to it as a sportsmobile. What they do is they add in three important things. The first thing is four-wheel drive. This is a quickly four-wheel four drive system. As uh, indicated by the badge, that's right? Good. Even a phone number. All right, that's cool. Yep. Uh, quickly is important simply because they produce very good four-wheel drive uh, chassis. I think they're out of Massachusetts. Got it. Mobile has them modified before they're sent to the plant, is my understanding. So this was uh, modified uh, by Quigley for the four-wheel four drive sportsmobile adds the uh, pop top, they call it the penthouse, which people say, you can put your pets up there. Yes, you can put your pets up there, but it's not a pet house, it's a penthouse is what they call it. So uh, between those two, I think that's what uh, that's what they sort of specialize in. Sportsmobile that. used to do the West Valleys with the- Put them on the, the map. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing they do is they put in RV stuff in the middle that uh, that's all custom made. So if you want a refrigerator, cabinet, uh, you saw a lot of it. That's the other thing that Sportsmobile does. So what's your clearance on this? I have no idea. Here. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Sorry. I'm saying it's probably at least 10 inches, right? Oh yeah. Maybe uh, even more. So my rig, by comparison, has seven. So you have significantly more clearance. So it's a manual manual um, shift to the uh, four by four, right? Oh no, it's automatic for her. She's usually driving. Depends who you're asking. <laughs> she has me get you know leap out, and then I have to turn these. These are the. But, I usually uh, stop well. the car so you don't get hit. I mean, that's, that's she is cool. I love her. <laughs> have you met the ginger walkabout? No, I haven't. Oh, you gotta, you gotta do her channel. Uh, oh. The ginger, she is a sassy, brassy lady. You'd love her. Love it. Yeah, she's, uh, she's, she's amazing. Um, so you have a brush guard on the front. Well, let's, uh, let's so, come around front here. Yeah, let's. Uh, uh, so what is this about? I have no idea. This, this was here when I bought it. Uh, I haven't, I, I haven't. Hit this any, is why you bought it and the I pop top. I haven't hit anything with it yet, so I don't know if it works. That's because uh, you don't drive. So it's, it's, um, yeah, let's see. Hear this powerful you can hook it up <laughs> to a tree and pull yourself out by pushing a button in there and by <laughs> making your spouse get out of the car and hook it up you're killing me um so the and the lights they work too so if you want that's a good question we haven't okay. tried them <laughs> so they've been in the rig for a week and look at these guys they're like pros first rv too <laughs> i love it yeah. i love how you roll just take it take a risk right it's yeah. so awesome Look at this, it's just so amazing. We bought this sight unseen. I know, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. So, and you're the fourth owner, I think you said? Yeah, we're the fourth owners. Which is, so it's really been tried and true, which is really yeah. amazing. So we bought it about six, eight weeks ago. Something we like had that. to fly to Arizona, we picked it up sight unseen, and then we drove it back to Ohio. Uh, we did a bunch of dispersed camping, four nights of dispersed camping uh, in that region uh, before just hitting the highway and trying to get it back through the plains. And the reason again, you bought a van versus you know, one of these things. Oh, flat out. I want to be able to drive it. Yeah. Because I okay. knew I was going to be doing a lot of the driving. Right. And I want to be able to drive anywhere. And I want to know I am secured to the ground. So I was born and raised in the country. I've been driving tractors and stuff basically my whole life. So I wanted a four by four so I could go basically and do what we call gravel travel, dirt road travel. Wow, gravel travel, new yeah. term. Gravel travel. So, so let's just talk about some RV systems because people are going to be right. super yeah. curious. So um, fresh water on board, how much? We have 20 gallons of fresh water on board. And Emergency toilet we talked about. So there's no shower, no... Uh, so the uh, gray water from the sink, where's, how does that you deal with that? It runs out over here and I usually collect it, but since this time all I've had is just fresh water coming out. I haven't yeah. even bothered collecting because it was like maybe a gallon. Yeah, it makes total sense. And then the electrical system, Tim, people are always interested. So you're plugged in clearly. What's yeah, so what's up with the uh, electrical? 30 amp. Okay, so you, then they go into a battery? The 30 amp goes, goes uh, directly into an inverter and a converter. The converter will charge the house batteries. There's two house batteries uh, in, on board. And then, so they will get uh, recharged if you're plugged in. They also recharge, of course, uh, if your battery separator that prevents your starter battery from going dead because you left the radio on. For the chassis, yep. yep. Makes super sense. It also powers the uh, star cool, which is the air conditioning system. It's not a separate air conditioning system. It's tied into the Freon line in the front dash. Oh, interesting. So, for okay. example, if you're charging the Freon, you have to make sure that both systems are actually on when you're putting the new Freon. And keeping mama cool is kind of important. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, well, these days. <laughs> yep. And tell me about solar, no solar? There is no solar. Uh, ah. We've seen a lot of the YouTube videos. We're very familiar with the overlanding experience. Most people who buy these rigs, and in fact, a lot of the overlanding rigs, 
uh, do so in weather where you're always in the sun. Yeah. Typically, east of the Mississippi, when we're camping, we like shady spots. And we used to have a solar panel that you could just put out onto the grass. Invariably, at the end of the day, when we came back from touring the waterfalls or what have you, the, the solar panel, of course, is always facing the wrong direction. So that kind of was a fail for us. Yeah. So we're just going to rely on uh, either recharging the battery uh, by driving around or idling the engine or on the on the occasion that we can plug it in we'll do that or just no electricity it's fine um, yeah uh, on board propane plane. sure uh we we sometimes travel with a propane stove she has a nice uh, camp shaft oven so yep. we could actually do casseroles and things this I'm trip we didn't bring that this also has a line that goes inside. I have no idea where it goes <laughs> inside. Uh, so there must be a propane appliance in there somewhere I we'll haven't have found. Somewhere. Don't oh, well. believe it has a furnace. I, and I don't believe the, the hot water here is propane. Oh, so you got a lot of gear on the back and people are always uh, okay. wanting to know about bikes and, and okay. the, are you killing bugs? What is this thing? Let's so start there. First of all, you've seen the Beverly Hillbillies. We don't have the rocking chair on top. Yes, the, the, the grand mystery. Uh, Christy made these Look. three tanks. Oh, I love these. Uh, you fill them with water, clean water. You leave them in the sun. They will get warm just did two gallon um what are these things weed sprayers called? Yeah. and then i spray painted them black i put a line so you don't overfill the line so it doesn't blow and then this all is a long hose and it comes out and then you can like have very, a very portable we just hook it up and then we have on uh, here a, a shake-up pop-up shower it's just a shake-up yeah. pop-up okay. shower and then this hose goes in the top and you're good for at least five minutes of wonderful warm water. Yeah. As a spare tire i don't have a spare tire you got your uh, gear basket and I, the thing i actually really love about our spare tire is it's on one of those rack things so it like pulls out by itself oh so you can open the doors without uh yeah, 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 unmounting that. yeah and same with my bike rack thing i kind of um went to a local rv place in dayton and he uh the guy who owns the RV place made this custom for somebody and then he didn't want it. And I was like, I'll take it. it opens up to one side. Ah, uh, yeah. So yeah. That is so and awesome. And it has a step. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I got one last question for uh, Tim and Christy here, but uh, are you enjoying this? If you are, if you learned something, give it a thumb up. Sure appreciate that. That helps others find the channel. Let's me know that you enjoyed this. Let's Tim and Christy know you enjoyed this. <laughs> um, comment below where are you watching from and is this the kind of rig you would be interested in versus the kind of rig that i roll around in this is very different and that's the whole point of rving it's what do you want to accomplish and how do you want to accomplish it truly this is just a tool to get what you want yeah which is just adventure so last question is um what advice would you to give to our viewers um they either have one or in your case it's your first one yeah and my advice would be, if you think you know exactly what you want, you probably don't know exactly what you want. Mm -hmm. Even in our story, everything we have has been replaced. The spatulas have been replaced. The cups have been replaced. Uh, you know, hooks, the, uh, the stove top. We have a garage full the of wallpaper. things that... Yes, well, but we have a garage full of <laughs> items that were perfect for, for one scenario or for one time in our story. And now uh, we have an, a whole different set. They're going to they go say, to Goodwill. <laughs> and they say when you buy a rig, by the time you buy your third one, you're going to know what you want. Yeah. So this is, but we're really excited about this one. We're taking it on a camping trip right now to uh, the Smokies. And then uh, we're going to visit some family after that. Uh, and we're really excited to be having this trip, but I'm sure when we return, we're gonna have a whole list of more things that we wanna do to it, modifications we need to make to it. Yeah. So, so the advice is, if you think you know what you want, uh, don't wait to get what you want. Do it now. Do it now, yep. get something, and then you're going to learn what you want, because this is not a destination, it's a process. And what you need to do is get out there and do something. If you wanted to buy an RV to start hiking, you don't need to buy an RV to start hiking. Start your hiking uh, or camping or whatever you want to do. Start living the life uh, instead of, for example, wishing that you had the equipment. Don't wait for the equipment. Just do it. Uh, don't be vicariously living through people on YouTube. Uh, get out there. Let the YouTube experience be your motivation to go out there, get out there, and do something with your life. That was That would be my... Uh, advice. What do you have? If you really think before you're going to buy a camper van at least, there are some places you can rent them and here's my theory. If you are that serious about buying one, okay, you need to fly to a location that you can rent it. You need to rent one for a week. You need to live in it. You need to make sure this is for you because when we rented one, we were like, okay, if we ever buy one of those things, we don't want a bench seat and we don't want this to be here and that's a pain in the ass. So we need this to be this way. So one, it figured out what layout we want and we actually are really pleased with this layout. And then um, two, 
they are expensive. So if you're not sure you're really committed to this lifestyle, I do suggest buying something gently used. We got lucky on a diesel. I wanted a diesel. I wanted a four by four. There were some things I just wanted, which I know is probably a little different as a female, but I kind of knew what I wanted. I work for it. I'm going to go for it. So that's what I did. Um, but yeah, and then make it a priority and just do it. So I, I think though the best advice is to rent it first. And a lot of people are like, yeah, but then you gotta pay to fly out there and to rent a van. I'm like, look, dude, if you're gonna pay $180,000 for this van, you should have $1,000 for the flights and like $4,000 to rent a van for a week, come on. To not make a bad decision. Yes, to not decide. Or to make a good decision. Or to make a good decision. Because yeah. we immediately were like, oh, we're gonna be really tight in this van with, all, with us and our two adult girls, our adult you know, female women that we've raised. And I'm like, oh my God, we totally made this work. And even the girls loved it. We all loved it. We still tell stories and laugh about that trip. It was so wonderful, mm -hmm. so. That is so great. Yeah, so that's my advice. Perfect. I do have one favor to ask of you. Yes. And that, or I, actually, of, of your viewers, we don't have a name for this. Oh yeah, uh, help us name we'll it. We'll be in contact with, yeah. with Scott. So if you have an idea for what the name of this van should be. So name the van. Hey, now we got some homework to do. Uh, comment below. A comment below for sure, thank you. Because I can read them. <laughs> yes. Let's hope name the van. Uh, GT's kind of interesting. Gravel, gravel, gravel travel, travel is... GT for short. That's gravity, gravy. I don't know. Let's work on that, right? Yeah. Um, so Give thank you, ideas. Tim and Chris. It's so awesome. Thank what a you. great couple. I mean, just the magic of this is the RVing experience. You just you, we we had this common bond of adventure, yep. and I think that's just in this curiosity. That's a human condition. I think has largely been lost in our urban environment. Yes. You know, you go to work, you do your cube, you go back to home, you do the kids and family thing, and the, your, your curiosity is like twice a year when you go on vacation and I think our veers at large have this sense of curiosity that's just over every day unquenchable yeah uh, another thing yes we have our veers have a natural sense of curiosity but I think there's also a sense of community as well yes uh, because people because we get to meet like people, look at this we like met you. you're awesome uh, and people are always coming around going hey what do you have how do you do this we're always sharing information yeah. and really uh, making a common shared experience as well yeah mm -hmm. it's so true it's so true well, thank you for um, sharing your story, sharing your house with us, and uh, we wish you all the best. We'll uh, look forward in the next couple months of uh, helping you name the van. Yeah, uh, let's work on it. What a charming couple. Well, thank you. And, thank you. Uh, Our pleasure. We'll see you soon. Stay safe. So I hope you enjoyed that little uh, tour and a little bit of story. Again, remind yourself where these folks came from. They've been tent campers for years. They sort of got tired of it. They tried a couple different options to tent camping, landed up in a van. They're the fourth owner of a really significant four-wheel drive, very serious um, uh, four-wheel drive van. And uh, not a rig that would work in my case, but what is your situation like? And that's the beauty of doing your research. Uh, and I love Christy's advice to rent a rig to determine if it's going to be right for you or not. Um, buying RVs is expensive. Uh, Class Bs are kind of hard to get right now, so you don't want to make a mistake necessarily. And um, just love all of the practical advice they gave there. So again, if you learned something different you didn't know before, give this a thumb up. And I was sure appreciate. Well, I was sure would appreciate it. So would Tim and Christy. Uh, let's help them name the van. So comment below. Watch the story maybe a time or two, and then put the names of the, uh, put your suggested name for the van in the comment below. And what I'll do is I'll collect those over the next couple of weeks, and then we'll put them in the, the best five, um, based on what Tim and Christy suggest, into a survey in YouTube. And we'll do a uh, vote on the favorite name uh, based on those five. That's how Lily got her name. Uh, I posted five names, and Lily um, was the most most voted for name and that's how my Travato GL became Lily. Thanks again for watching. Really appreciate it. We'll talk to you soon.